The job market taking a major hit. Now is the media helping Democrats make some major excuses for it. Welcome, everyone. I'm Eric Bowling in for Neil Cavuto, and this is your world. 88,000. 88,000. That's how many jobs were created last month, well below the 200,000 expected. The jobless rate dipping to 7.6% as more Americans simply stopped looking for work. The labor force participation rate hitting its lowest level since Jimmy Carter was president. And now this from the Associated Press saying the weakness may signal some companies are worried about steep government spending, sequestration cuts, a.k.a., even though the bulk of the cuts have yet to kick in. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid also citing the cuts, saying, quote, only Congress can undo the serious effects of Republicans' harsh austerity. But no mention of the hike in the payroll tax, which is blamed for consumers clamping down on spending. Or a Chamber of Commerce study survey finding that the health care law is now the biggest concern of and for employers. To Market Watcher right now, Craig Smith on separating the fact from the fiction. Craig, what is it? Is it government spending slowing down because of sequestration, or is it consumers not spending? Well, you and I both know what it is, Eric, and this is what's funny. I watched you talk about it on the five back in December. I watched Neil talk about it right here on Your World. I watched the Fox business anchors, which, by the way, if you don't get it, you should demand it, talk about it, that when you go to raise taxes on the top 2% of American people, you are going to lose jobs. And guess what? We're seeing that slowdown right now, Eric. Right. Well, when you raise uh, Craig, taxes on all middle-class Americans with the Social Security tax that had to go right. up, that. that means less money for people to go out to, to eat out and so on and so forth. I was thinking about it for the average 250,000 wage earner. Think about it. He, he has $10,000 10, 10, $10, more in taxes this year. There goes the gardener. There goes the maid. And now, when, like in my own situation, in my own company, we lost a person this year to attrition. We're not replacing that person, Eric, because I don't know what I have to deal with with Obamacare. I have to make sure I protect all my other employees because they get private insurance. So you and I both know what it is. Well, well, and I, I, if it was sequestration, sequestration was Mr. Obama's idea. So one way or another, why doesn't this president take credit for what is happening and give us some leadership to turn it around? Craig, you hit on it earlier uh, in, in that answer, but it wasn't the 2%. Well, it may have something to do with the 2%, uh, you know, the top 2% earners uh, g getting their taxes raised. It was the payroll taxes. The payroll tax increase hit every American. It just wasn't the top 2%. A absolutely. And, and as I said, you know, that means that, you know, a $1,000 average person, now all of a sudden they can't maybe have that night out where they go to the, you know, down to grab a pizza or a movie show. That means that that restaurant owner can't hire more people or maybe even have to lay somebody off. But, you know, when I saw this st statistic today that I'm sure you saw, Eric, mm -hmm. 663,000 people left the workforce in March. That now puts it 90 million people have left the workforce. 9.4 million people have left the workforce since Mr. Obama took over the White House. If you were to adjust that for population, I could argue that we have the lowest historic rate of working age people working in America. We can't continue on this path, Eric. We have 0.6% GDP. Yeah, right, right, Craig, Until but we let me get jump in here. Back, allow, allow we're me not going to get it on, you know, this thing turned around. Allow me to jump in here. If you add those people that keep leaving the workforce, if you add them back in, you're talking about a 12, 13, maybe even a 14% unemployment rate. But here's the question. All those people that leave the workforce, they're living on the government dole. They're, they're relying on the government. Where's the incentive to get them back to work? Amen. You, look, they get unemployment. Chronic unemployment, by the way, now is 4.6% uh, of our workforce, 40% uh, 40 of our workforce, 4.6 million people. But you're right. First, you get unemployment for X amount of weeks, and if it's more than 27 weeks, it's chronic unemployment. Right. Then if that runs out, you go on to disability. Last month, we had 82,000 people join the disability ranks. That's now 9 million right. people getting disability. Then you get some, uh, some welfare if the disability runs out. Then you get food stamps. Eric, uh, you and I both know, and Neil knows, these numbers don't work. And what's amazing to me is the administration can say, 
say it and nobody challenges it. Last night he said automatic weapons killed those children back east. No, they didn't. Nice to raise three million bucks, but it's not the truth. Yeah, he you won't he, lose he your doctor there. if you there's decide no to keep your doctor. Craig, well, we're going to lose a doctor. Your premiums won't go up. My premiums have gone up, Eric. Right. When will somebody hold right. this man accountable that you can't keep telling, I don't want to say a lie, you can't, you, you can't keep avoiding the truth and not have it catch up with you sooner or later. Sure, sure. All right, uh, Craig, we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much. Good seeing you, Eric. 24,000